changes started in the 1970s with electronic improvements in music and the way in which their products were stored and distributed. This video will introduce the technological changes brought about by digital media. These changes in the 1970s allowed for the way in which music was freely created, stored, and shared today. The creation of a computer that could be afforded by a small business or even a single person came about in the 1970s. The Apple company introduced some of the first units that gained wide acceptance. Here, for instance, is the famous Apple II computer. Text and graphics were recorded as a series of zeros or ones, or actually as magnetic signals. At that time, computers made use of magnetic disks called floppy disks. The magnetic disks were encrypted with what is called binary code. Let's take a look at how words can be encoded into binary code. Here, for example, is an illustration of how text is encoded into binary code. Let's look at my name. For instance, if we take the T, capital T for Terry, it's 01010100. Then the lowercase e here, 01100101. Then we'll have two R's, 01110010. See, each of these is unique. And the Y, 01111101001. So you can see how the sequence of 2, 4, 6, 8, 8 uh, binary numbers can create then or stand in for a letter and this is the way all text is encoded into um, a computer. We learned in the last unit that magnetic tapes can be rewritten over and over. It was the same with floppy disks, computer hard disks, and later developments with solid state drives. In prior times text was written with typewriters and fixed on paper. Now text could be stored and changed in computer memory and only if needed printed out later. Uh, digital technology greatly changed the way in which text documents were created, edited, and stored. Now in terms of musical sounds, early computers had a sound card which could generate noises and musical tones. The computers also had loudspeakers. In the beginning, the sounds were quite rudimentary. Uh, for instance, here are some startup and crash sounds from early Macintosh computers. The need for musical sounds on computers and for video games 
prompted a whole new code for music that is called MIDI. This will be discussed in the next lecture. As text and graphics were represented in code, audio sounds and videos were the next to be digitized. These were more difficult to digitize due to the great amount of data needed to represent audio and video files. Take, for example, these three files for Unit 13. The Word document is the worksheet. And this file was 464 kilobits in size. Here is the PowerPoint presentation I made for Unit 13. It included graphics in it, and it was 2,505 kilobits. Take a look now at the video. This re represents, obviously, the graphics and the sounds and everything. This is 77,166 kilobits. So the early computers could only do these smaller files, but as more and more memory and speed became available, these larger files were possible. Great progress was possible with developments in computer processing speeds and improvements in magnetic storage. By 2005, Videos in small formats were being distributed over the Internet. In the next decade, the speed of the Internet greatly increased, and consequently the quality and size of video files improved as well. You need to realize the importance of digitization. Prior to digital media, each media needed a special method for recording and playing it. You needed a television to see a television broadcast, a radio for radio programs, a record player for vinyl recordings, a tape player for tapes, and a video player for recordings, for video recordings. All had different media and needed different equipment for retrieval. Everything changed with digital media. The first book in popular literature that captured the impact of these changes was Thomas L. Friedman's The World is Flat. Friedman noticed that when all media could be digitized, physical limitations of all kinds were removed. This meant that items could be exchanged from anywhere. People didn't have to live in a certain location to make a digital product. It could be made anywhere. Now there is global competition for the production of media. Today it is such that when you graduate, you might be competing for work with someone living in India, for instance. I count it such a blessing that I live in the digital age. 20 years ago, around the year 2000, I could not have created a course such as this. One would need expensive cameras and recording equipment from a television studio. Then how would you broadcast it? The internet at that time could transmit text, MIDI sounds and pictures well, but the video was too bulky for the slow download rates then. But today with a computer and software, a person can imitate a television station from the year 2000 by recording content, editing it, and then broadcasting it. What an amazing age that we live in. This course, MUSC 114, is made entirely possible by digitized media. Binary encodings make possible the words you read in the course, the graphics you view, the music you listen to, and the videos you watch. Worldwide, I'm known as the Bassoon Digital Professor. I've created hundreds of videos that have been viewed over a million times in seven different languages. These videos are viewed in Iran, in China, Eastern Europe, uh, South America, and I have a large following of students who learn from my instrument who learn to play the bassoon because of my videos. Uh, worldwide, there are very few 
uh, bassoon instructors. And so this uh, gives me a chance in which to uh, publish and put forth my knowledge. Uh, take a look at my website here. It's called toread.net. To read for double read .net. Uh, I have my videos on YouTube as well as Tudo, which is a Chinese uh, website. Uh, in many countries, YouTube is blocked, so many of my followers go to Tudo or to read.net. I'm very proud uh, that in this course, you're learning to become digital distributors as well. And you can use this technology to become a teacher or as a professional in the future. Keep up the good work. Bye.